Happy Tau Day and welcome to Scholar Sauce. Back in 2001, Dr. Bob Pillay wrote an interesting article for the Mathematical Intelligencer called Pi is Wrong. And he started an international debate about whether or not pi is the right circle constant to use. You see, pi is the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. So C over D is equal to pi. But Bob argued that what's really fundamental about a circle is its radius, not its diameter. And so he said the circle constant we should use is the circumference divided by the radius, which is equal to 2 pi, or what is now called tau. Well, Bob Pillay and I are really close friends, and we have had this discussion many a time about whether or not pi or tau is the better circle constant. Well, today I'm going to share with you a debate that he and I had on Pi Day 2023 to determine once and for all which is the better circle constant between pi and tau. Welcome, everybody, to uh, Pi Day 2023. Uh, I hope you guys all got some pi, right? Hopefully, good. Excellent. Now that your bellies are full, we can talk about why pi is better than tau, right, Bob? <laughs> so I'm here with my friend, Dr. Bob Pillay, who is the father of the modern tau movement. We're going to have a debate, but not in the sort of standard moderated kind of debate. I'm going to let Bob speak for about 20 minutes on, uh, <clears throat> on tau, and then I'll rebut for about 20 minutes uh, for pi, and then we'll open it up into questions, and you guys can ask us questions about what you, what you think. And uh, anyway... Take it away, Bob. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, turn around for a second. Your shirt okay. says that. Can't eat Tao, but there is Tao food. <laughs> just, wa just wanted to pre-butt Alan's t-shirt. There's plenty of Tao food. Now, the main point about using 6.28 as a friendlier number, and this was a presentation I have now and I can put together, but I'll say something first. Is the main use I claim of pi is as a reference symbol for distance measure of circles, which we usually call radians, as the natural radian measure. And therefore, since the main use is for referencing measure around a circle, do you think of this portion of going around a circle, does that seem more like if you're thinking on a clock and you think of what portion of an hour, if you told someone 15 minutes, what would you say in terms of a fraction to describe this portion of the hour? A quarter. And mathematicians, because of pi, say a half, pi over two. And that's sort of cognitively dissonant. And if you ask for this much of one of the pies, would you say a half? Or would you say you wanted a quarter? And if you wanted to describe this portion of the xy plane, would you call this a halfant? or maybe a quadrant. quadrant. That's the main point. So the number that gives the full measure of circle measure makes the reference very natural because it has to have some irrational number, which actually, Aryabhata actually wrote down that, that it was an irrational number. So he knew that in about five, the year 500. Anyway, so let's get to the rest of it but that was that's my my pitch that and people will say well what about pi r squared for the circle maybe i'll anticipate that one well first of all whenever you have squares you should have a one half one half mv squared one half gt squared for falling bodies one half kx squared for the energy in a spring, in a Hooke's Law spring. So there should always be a one half. It should be one half tau r squared because it's the integral. They used to have, may have a, um, a moment from number file video and Phil Moriarty, let's see if this plays and has sound. Right. So two pi radians. Here's where the debate kicks in. Because some, particularly Bob Pally, if I, I hope I pronounced that right, it all, stems from this wonderful paper, Pi is Wrong, Bob Pallet. But he argued, 
well, isn't this rather confusing? So you go round one turn, and instead of being pi radians, it's two pi radians. I have a daughter who's nine, another daughter who's six. My daughter who's nine is starting to look at shapes and starting to look at angles, doing basic geometry. And I can see how this is going to be a big problem. That's, that's the point. And so I wrote, pi is wrong. Surprised that it would be published, but the editor of the Mathematical Intelligencer, a Springer journal, was Chandler Davis, who stood up to the McCarthy Committee, lost tenure at, at uh, Michigan in the 50s, and then later became, uh, they had an annual Chandler Davis lecture at Michigan in his honor. So, oh yeah, and one of the um, replies was that I think Alan would, <laughs> would like, I agree with Bob Powell's pious article, but it may be too pious. <laughs> okay, and then, in math, where all kinds of things, there are twos there, I think two should mean something. Equations should mean something. So if you have a two, it should mean that there should be a twice for some reason. Like, how many faces of a cube in n dimensions? Of a square, there are four. Of a three-dimensional cube, there are six. Two times the dimension. But why is the two there in all of the formulas? One over two pi periodicity of sine and cosine, the circular functions, they have a two pi. That two is only there because there's a one half in there. So when we talk about 270 degrees, we say three pi over two. That's like if you're 45 minutes away, you say, I'll be there in three halves of half an hour. It's just kind of silly. Lots of things. And in 2011, Michael Hartle made the Tau Manifesto to try and socially hack and really get Tau Day into, made into a thing, as uh, 628 as the, the day to celebrate. Um, and let's see, UVU students have done things with Tau. Um, Euler, the first time actually Euler used, the Euler, the mathematician who wrote the book, he used 6.28. He said, um, let, the, let the ratio of the Radius to periphery, that's where pi comes from, the first Greek letter of periphery, be 1 to pi. That's 6.28, 6 so the ver volume of a sphere becomes 2 his pi, which was really 6.28 instead of 4 thirds pi r cubed. So, oh, this is the one I like. If you want to know why it should be, the area should be, the area of a circle should be dependent on the radius, and it's really weird. Notice the pi people say, oh, but diameter is more important when they're talking about circumference. But when they're talking about area, they say, no, radius is more important, pi r squared. It's a little bit of a double standard. So here's this nice demonstration of why the area of a circle is one half the radius times the circumference. There. I'm unrolling a circle at each intermediate radius, you have an increasing length with distance from the center. And so you get a triangle when you unroll a circle from the center, and its area is obviously one half the radius times the circumference. Tau for Euler's formula, basically Euler's formula, e to the i, e to the something t, is the solution of a differential equation, it says something's proportional. But the constant proportionality is i, what is multiplication by i? It takes ab to minus ba. It's a quarter turn rotation, so it's basically the equations of uniform circular motion. And so e to the i tau should say one time around, you get back to where you started at, one zero, one in the complex plane. This was in many millions of views, pi is still wrong by, by heart. If you're still not convinced, I'd recommend reading The Tau Manifesto by Michael Hartle, who does a pretty thorough job addressing every possible complaint at TauDay.com. If you still want to celebrate Pi Day, that's fine. You can have your pie and eat it. But I hope you'll all join me on June 28th, because I'll be making Tau and eating, too. So definitely watch that. That's a lot of fun. Hertz. Oh, yeah. Angular frequency. That's why Hertz. <laughs> and there was a Wall Street Journal article, there's Michael Hardo and me on Tau Day at Google headquarters, and they made cupcakes. John Conway, The Game of Life, Cellular Autonoma, Automata, he said very clearly here, I asked 
posed this question to Princeton mathematician John Conway. Conway had strong feelings about the subject. 2 pi is obviously the correct constant. Of course, obviously. <laughs> pi day, tau time. MIT has an interesting take, which Alan and I probably both share, that there are times for both of them. So you should really have one pi on pi day and two pies on tau day, so you get three pies. And uh, so MIT admissions has always been on March 14th at now at 6.28 in the evening. So it, it handles both. Arthur Benjamin of Mathematics, there talks, he has a very nice book called The Magic of Math and has a little motion, you know, and an enter elegantly and entertainingly expressed article, Pi is Wrong, it's kind of nice, and he's the national backgammon champion. One of my former students did this <laughs> for Pi Day, intentionally left playing because it's half the pies. 3.14 is half. Tau Day on Twitter. <laughs> A uh, Hartle Palais constant, it was called, <laughs> is our town <laughs> manifesto. Yeah, we are Chad, I guess. Um, tau versus Pi, uh, there's a Khan Academy video, it's very good. Two Pi's are right. Uh, let's use Tau easier than Pi in Scientific American. Uh, the Tau of Tau. Um, some take it very seriously. Um, Pi day is That's one. certainly not us, right? Is right. <laughs> Very. Oh, back in 2007, Terry Tao, Terence Tao, the field medalist, said maybe 2 pi i because he's a complex analyst. And so he kind of suggested even as far back as 2007, before the Tao Manifesto, maybe the 2 pi i is even more fundamental constant uh, than 2 pi or pi. The generator of log one, so sort of there's a complex variables thing. And he was on the Colbert Report, which is kind of fun. Um, it mentioned me as the godfather of the movement, which was fun. This was Atlantic. Um, a lot of, it's just a lot of fun. The convert. <laughs> it's one of the weirdest things I'd come across, but it makes sense. Surprising people haven't changed before. Correct. A lot of Tau compliant, the theorem of the day website is Tau compliant. Um, it makes proofs and formulas friendlier. That's the basic idea. And, and more obvious, lots of endorsements. XKCD has some tau. And they like, pow, one and a half pi. <laughs> SMBC. <laughs> My two-year-old calculated the pi tau conversion constant. Two. <laughs> AMS book mentions this as makes good logical and pedagogical sense. Pi is still wrong. Uh, there have been more. Ethan Brown memorized pi to 2,000 digits. Um, the new rat blue pi, blueberry <laughs> tau, the new pi in blueberry and raspberry. Um, Euler, adoption of the symbol. Some good things, the original history. But I really like this new edition of, of Aryabhata. Uh, Euler went back and forth to to pi 1936, but he also wrote down semi, even when he did use pi, he said semi-circumference, half circumference. Right? So he knew pi was half of something, um, but he first used it there, and then again in the letter to D'Alembert in French now, he says, soit let pi be the circumference of a circle of whom the radius is one. That's what the translation of car soit pi, Pi in French, P. <laughs> La circonference d'un cercle dont le rayon est one. Hoyle, Fred Hoyle, the astronomer, talked about milliturns. He wanted decimal, a one turn, which was 6.28, and thousands, milliturns, and centiturns, and things. Turn, turn, turn. There's a Wikipedia page, friendlier fractions. A good estimate you can put, if you have a radius one, you can put six equilateral triangles around and get a pretty good approximation. No, it's a little bit bigger than six. Um, fractions of a turn. I really like to think of this as Two a quarter five. turn. Thanks. A quarter turn, a half turn, three quarters, one turn. So that's nice. And uniform circular motion for Euler's formula. Okay. Anyway, there. We're about to the right time. Okay. Perfect. Nice okay. to get to show this that I prepared for the yeah. last time. And, <laughs> and 
he prevented me or his fly well, on his Well, that's why hat. I wanted to make sure that you had a chance this time, Ron. All right, now for the better half of the presentation. <laughs> See, he said half already. <laughs> so my good friend uh, here, let me that sound. Uh, you know, the, Tao talks about being like super complete about everything, but he left out about half of everything uh, when it comes to what kind of formulas there are. Uh, you know, he, it is interesting that he points out uh, stuff about area. Uh, we've had this debate a few times, and so he kind of know we kind of know what some what our each other's uh, arguments are a little bit. But you know, we talked about the fact that this was a quarter, right? And that this is a half, and all that stuff. Well, you know, if you look at the area of the unit circle, what do you think the one on the left is? That's that's a that looks like a what? Cow. Looks like well, does it look like a like it looks like a hole, right? There's yeah. a whole a whole one there, right? Okay, if you look in the one in the middle, how much of the circle's there? Half, and the one on the right, it's, it's a quarter. So if you look at the areas of these, uh, you could, the first one here, uh, the area of the unit circle is pi, but it's tau half. So tau says that's half a circle, right? Wait, what? Yeah, so, so to, to be a little clear about this, in his argument, tau is the, the difference between tau and pi Pi is the, is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. Tau is the ratio of the circumference of the circle to its radius. If you compute angles, yeah, this is pi halves and tau quarter angles. But if you'd use area, you get the opposite problem. So here, the area of that circle is tau halves, but it's pi. So that's a whole pi. Uh, if you go to half of it, you get pi halves which is half of it, but it's tau fourths in area. So that's kind of a little interesting. Uh, and then the last one, that's eighth of a circle to tau if you look at area land rather than, rather than uh, a quarter. Right, Bob? <laughs> is, and which is primary, <laughs> circumference or angle or area? Angle or, that's the whole difference. It is, it is a little bit of, it is, a, it is an argument, uh, arguably yep. a different thing. Yep. But what's more important, angle, area? Yeah, let's take a look. There's a few other geometric formulas I want to take a look at. So let's look at the area. Ah. What if you went to a bigger circle? What if you did a bigger pi with radius 2? If you do radius 2, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no longer Yeah, works. you could definitely mess with that. But you can know, mess the, up with area. The, the, it, oh, the, this only works for, for radius <laughs> Hey, I didn't talk during yours. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, I didn't stimulate any thought, apparently. Let's take a look at a few other geometric formulas. If you look at the area formula of an ellipse, a certain constant appears. Take a look at that. So if the major radius is A and the minor radius is B, the area of that ellipse is pi times AB, not, not tau, pi times AB. If you look at the surface area of a torus, you get pi squared times the difference in the squares of, their, of the outer and inner radius. Uh, let's take a look at the area of a regular n-gon. You can see we got some sine of pi over n and cosine of pi over n. There's no, no tau anywhere. <clears throat> the perimeter of a regular n-gon, this is, this is a circumference thing. You got 2nr times the sine of pi over n. And that's that n sine of pi over n term, if you take a look at that and take its limit as n goes to infinity, you get pi. That's interesting, right? So we get, we get pi showing up everywhere a little bit. Uh, let's take a look at a few circumference and area formulas of circles and spheres, just, to, just for a minute, so we can see what it looks like in, in radius and diameters. So under pi, you get this here. So the circumference in pi is 2 pi r, or pi d, if d is the diameter. You can see the area formula there. And uh, then down to, the, to spheres, you have 4 pi r squared for the surface area, or pi d squared. That's an interesting thing. If you look here, the circumference divided by the diameter of a circle is pi, but the surface area divided by the diameter squared of a sphere is pi. So that shows up in two different places. Uh, but if you take a look at the formulas there, how many fractions do you see in all those formulas? Three out of how many total uh, formulas? We got like, what, eight? So three out of eight, okay, have fractions. Watch what happens if we switch to tau. Now, how many fractions do you see? Yeah, oh, it doubled the number of fractions. You know, they, they just say this is twice as good, right? I mean, do you guys like fractions? Does do fractions know? feel fundamental to you? Right? Yeah, I think, that's, I think that's kind of a bit of a problem. It's my turn to talk, Bob. Let's get rid of this. 
<laughs> no more Taylor series. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at some angles here. Now, in Euclidean geometry, uh, this is one of my favorite ones. Okay, in Euclidean geometry, Euclid never used angles bigger than pi. Okay, that's a whole angle to, to Euclid. And the reason why is because if you get try to get something bigger, where's the angle in that? Which one's the angle between those two sides? Is it the weird outside piece or is it the inside piece? If you just came across uh, two bent rays like that and looked at what the angle would be, what would you pick? I think most people would probably pick the smaller one. Well, the smaller angle can never get bigger than pi in radians, right? So that's when that happens is when you get bigger than pi, suddenly it switches and it looks weird and you, you think the angle is on the other side. So Euclidean geometry never used an angle bigger than pi when Euclid de de uh, described it. Uh, for tau, though, that's one whole angle. You know, and he, he argues, he argues that's because it's a full turn, right? Well, he was walking down the hallway once to me, and I said, hey, Bob, turn around, and guess what he did? So what's one full turn to you? <laughs> no, I'm not so sure that that's one full turn, Bob. <laughs> did the angles have signs? Good, serious question, plus and minus? Plus oh, when, I don't know plus if he, he, he did a little bit of trigonometry, but it mainly stuck around with just the uh, pi to minus just, pi. A, just to zero to pi uh, angles. But uh, to minus yeah. pi. So uh, let's take a look at another place in Euclidean geometry. It's one of my favorite ones. Okay, so you guys see a triangle there, right? What's the angle sum of a triangle? If you add up the measures of all three of those angles, what do you get? 180 degrees, right? Yes. Which is what in radians? Anybody know? So it's pi, right? Okay, so the sum of the angles inside that triangle are pi, not yeah. not not tau. Outside, <laughs> inside, okay, <laughs> they're pi, right? They add up to pi. And in fact, if you look at a regular n-gon, the angle sum of the interior angles is always a multiple of pi. It's always the number of sides minus two times pi. Now, you do get a 2 pi there, but that's because it's, you're, you're doing this k minus 2 thing. The 2 isn't what was fundamental about that. The pi was, okay? Another interesting... <laughs> Exterior angles. Always. I know, I know. Another interesting uh, thing about this, too, is that if you take... So this, this property of the angle sum at equaling 180 degrees or equaling pi is only true if you draw a triangle on a flat piece of paper. If you try to draw a triangle on a sphere you get angle sums that are strictly larger than pi. So if you draw them even on the surface of the Earth, believe it or not, the triangles add up to more than pi. You just have to make a really, really big one. In fact, we figured, I figured this out one time. In order to make a triangle large enough to have 181 degrees in it, angle sum, it would have to be about the size of Texas. So it's pretty big triangles before you start noticing a problem, which is why we never notice it in the small. But it nonetheless is bigger than pi when you add up the angles. If you draw it on a negatively curved surface, like a saddle, the, the angle sum of the triangles is strictly less than pi. So this pi number seems to be what the curvature of those spaces is trifurcating on. If it's flat, it's equal to pi. If it's bigger, it's, it's bigger than pi. If it's less, it's less than pi. So that's an interesting thing, not, not tau, but pi, okay? Okay, so let's talk about trigonometry, because this is, this is where it came up with, right? Like the idea was the angles, this is a quarter of a turn, right? There's a quarter of a, of a circle, so it should be, you know, tau quarters instead of pi halves, right? Because it's supposed to make trigonometry look better. Okay, well, here's your, trig, your six trig functions with their main properties, their domains, uh, their periods, and where their zeros are. How many of you have taken trigonometry? Most of you, okay, most of you. These are where you see the nice, the, the things that are happening. Now, watch what happens. Take a look. How many fractions do you see there? Uh, I think I see about maybe four, right? See four? Watch what happens if we change trigonometry to working with tau. Does that look better or does that look worse? <laughs> Is that easier to memorize or harder to memorize? Which of those two things looks more on the fundamental side of things than, uh, than the other? Think about those kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly how I feel about it, too. I, you know, so <laughs> Why are you so anti-rational? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, see, the great thing is I get to edit this video, so I can just cut that <laughs> right out. <laughs> Uh, so we talk, uh, Bob talked about Euler's formula, right? This is what it looks like with pi. Now, 
Some people argue that you get e to the i pi is equal to negative 1. Now, e to the i tau equals 1, which is great, okay? But if you put 1, the negative 1 to the other side, you now get all the really cool constants in math. You get e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0, which is pretty cool, right? Okay, here's, here's tau's expression, okay? I can even divide by 2 and get 6 yeah. cool numbers. <laughs> Now, now, the question about all this is whether or not something's fundamental, right? Okay. This formula is a special case of this Euler's formula here, e to the i theta equals the cosine of theta plus i sine theta. The first positive angle for which that number, that formula, produces a real number is pi. Tau is the second time that occurs. So when you guys think about something fundamental, do you think about the first time something happens? Or the second time something happens. You know, that's, I don't know, that's kind of an interesting thing. I, I, yeah, so anyway, just for fun, there's a really great biblical reference to this too, okay? Just, just, just for kicks, okay? Look, it doesn't matter what religion you are. This is an interesting, funny thing. In fact, this verse here is from 1 Kings 7.23. It's in the King James Version is what the version I quoted. But uh, this is actually uh, frequently uh, lambasted because if you look at it, it talks about a circular... Uh, a pool, okay, that's 10 cubits across, and then it says that the around is 30 cubits. So that would seem to say that the circumference divided by the diameter would be 30 divided by 10, which is 3. So it looks like this is saying that uh, pi is equal to 3, which is problematic, because pi is definitely not equal to 3. And so for some people argue that this is, that this is uh, you know, an issue. But it is curious if you look at Hebrew numerology, which Hebrews use numbers as poetry, okay? So each of their characters had a number attached to it. And a lot of times they put a uh, poetic hidden meaning in the imagery that they used by using words that added up to certain numbers. And something interesting happens in this particular verse. So the little red area there, the line of 30 cubits, um, the word line in Hebrew is made up of two characters typically, and the characters add up to 106, the, the numbers that are associated with those characters. But it's curious, if you look this up, and I, and I did this, you can look this up in a Hebrew, ver Hebrew version of the Old Testament. The word line there adds in a third character that's silent. That character adds five to the total number, making the number add to 111 instead. Which is weird. It's not normally what's in there for, with line, as far as I can tell. But curiously, if you take 111 and divide it by 106 and multiply it by the pi value that it's claiming, you get that which is kind of awesome. I don't know if that's what they were going for, but it's like pretty cool. <laughs> I look at this and I would argue that if, that if pi is good enough for God, it's, it's good enough for me. <laughs> and for Rama. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, uh, so mainly the idea that, that I want to present here is that there are a lot of places where pi shows up. And one thing I want you to recognize, the other constants he mentioned were tau, which is a 2 pi, and then Terence's tau mentioned 2 pi i. There's only one thing that those three numbers have in common. <laughs> pi. That's what makes it fundamental. <laughs> so anyway, that's why I think pi is a better circle constant. I think it looks better in a lot of places. Ultimately, though, the real point of uh, what, well, actually, I'll hold off. Why don't we open it up for questions, then I'll wrap this up. So, anybody have any questions about any of this cool stuff that we talked about? Yeah. So, in a, if you're doing a triangle on a curved surface. Yeah. Would um, that triangle have to be for each? 120 degrees to add up to 2 pi. So... There's an actual formula called mm -hmm. either Girard's theorem or, and it's on that theorem of the day, and they do a tau compliant proof of that. So a 90 90 90 triangle, think of the North Pole and then two the 90 equators. degrees 90 across, that's nine, 90 90 90. It's yeah. easy for me to think of that. There are eight of those on the sphere of surface area 4 pi. So pi, so those must be pi over 2. Add up the angles, subtract pi. 90, 90, 90, subtract pi the area. What did he just say there? Subtract what? Yeah, subtract <laughs> pi. You get, you get the area. So add up the angles. If it's 120, 120, 120, 360 minus pi 
um, in degrees would be 180, right? Would be pi, right? And that would be the area pi. So there'd be four of those. That's actually yeah. the if you took a tetrahedron, four of them in the sphere. If you blew up a tetrahedron, which to a sphere, you'd get 100, 320 yeah. degree angle. So essentially what happens is the area of a triangle on the surface of a sphere is proportional to its excess in area in angle sum. So that's what he's getting out the angle sum minus pi. And, I, and the proportionality constant, I believe, is r squared. So you just take the, the area, uh, you know, if you want 120, right? One. <laughs> right, if you do it with radius one, yeah. But uh, anyway, so, so your, your thing would be pi that's great r squared would be, the, would be the area right. of that uh, particular thing. So, and that, that's actually, by the way, how I found out how big of a triangle needed to be to be 181 degrees, is I used that particular formula and found out what the surface area would be. And it's actually really close to the, air, the surface area of the state of Texas. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, that's a great question. Any other questions about uh, pi or tau? So it, it changes from pi r squared to one half tau r squared, which is a little bit like one half mv squared, right. one half gt squared, and so it shows that the area is like a triangle, one half mm -hmm. radius times circumference. To so to be fair about that preference. particular point, to be fair about that particular point, the reason why that one half shows up a lot in these in those formulas is they happen to be things like integrals of certain stuff. How many of you taken calculus, right? You're taking calculus, right? So when you do calculus and you integrate x, you, you end up getting uh, one, half x, one half x squared, right, is what you integrate. Right. Well, integrals compute areas, right? And so, the re so that, that actually is a pretty good argument for tau, I'll, I'll admit, uh, that having a one half in with the area is, is, there's a good reason why that should be there and why it shows up in other places. That is fundamental to area, but you know. But not spherical areas. But not spherical areas. <laughs> <laughs> and so our conclusion is that for different purposes, just like Euler's original, each one is better, and you should use whichever one is best suited to your needs. Yeah, and, and honestly, that's what Euler did. That's, that's why there's confusion about it. Euler would, at the beginning of each one of his papers, would say, I'm going to use pi equal to this number today. And in another paper, he's saying, I'm going to let pi be equal to this number. And sometimes you pick 3.14, sometimes you pick 6.28 or whatever. And it was just whatever was most convenient for the, for the thing. The really cool thing about this, and, and I agree with Bob uh, on this, is that it's trying to show you that not everything in math is cut and dry. Part of mathematics is being able to communicate about complicated ideas and how we choose to communicate about them is, is a complicated problem sometimes. Yeah. And there are places where one constant might be more convenient than another in order to communicate an idea. Yeah. And that's really kind of the key point that we want to yeah. get at, is that math is not just about understanding the world, it's also about being able to communicate about yeah. your understanding of so, the world. So it's not one or the other, and Euler was mathematically, or in terms of circle constants, he was non-binary. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, thank you very much for listening to us. If there's any other questions, I'll take them. Otherwise, thanks, guys. Happy Pi Day. Very good. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed our Tau Day presentation. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe to Scholar Sauce and click that notification bell so you can find out about all the great content that we're bringing out, including this video here about why a straight line might not be the shortest distance between two points, or this video here about why you should stop saying Pi is infinite.